Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this talk. We are going to talk about uh, our research uh, about uh, sensitive data in uh, on the client side, so in browsers, in web pages. And uh, I am uh, Stefano Di Paola. I'm the CTO and Chief Scientist of uh, IMQ Minded Security. And uh, I like to 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 work in uh, in software security and also do some research since 99 and uh, i have a lot of uh, past in in the uh, in the field um in particular um, lately also automotive cybersecurity I've done a lot of uh, uh, stuff from the client side, uh, uh, HTTP, parameter pollution, uh, DOM XSS uh, with uh, other tools such as Dominator, MBC Detect, JS, uh, JavaScript deobfuscation, and so on. Then there is Martino. Hello, everybody. My name is Martino. I am a principal software security consultant at uh, IMQ Minded Security. I've been uh, in computer science field since uh, 2012, and uh, I've been an next developer, and then uh, now I'm pretty much a penetration tester, so I'm a breaker, and uh, I perform uh, an, a large amount uh, of types of assessment on uh, customers' applications, uh, mostly on the web and the mobile sites. And uh, I have done uh, some kind of research uh, such like uh, dynamic instrumentation on uh, mobile PHP and JavaScript, uh, mobile reversing, uh, something on automotive, and uh, off work uh, I usually drive tractors, uh, just so you can see in, uh, in the third image. Okay, so what uh, are we gonna talk uh, today uh, is uh, a project which uh, is, uh, was, was released as an OWASP project, it's called uh, the OWASP Priceless Toolkit, and uh, this project was developed by IMQ Mindless Security within the Testable project. Testable is uh, a EU-funded uh, project within the H2020, Horizon 2020 project uh, and involves uh, several partners, nine partners that you can see in the image, uh, which are coming from both the academia and the industry. And uh, if you don't know what is it, please uh, go on the website, you can find something uh, interesting, such as uh, some GitHub references and so on. Uh, in a few words, uh, the testable project is aiming to improve the testability of web applications and about the application uh, themselves uh, in uh, other, other contexts uh, and discovering security, privacy, and machine learning stuffs. Today we're going to focus on privacy things. So, the problem that we wanted to address uh, is that uh, in the modern web applications, uh, privacy and data leaks are a problem. Uh, since modern web applications basically handles uh, user sensitive data in uh, D several and different ways. But uh, the first question that we want to ask ourselves is, uh, what is sensitive data in the context of the web application? Basically, can be something like uh, uh, the, our browsing history. So, what we, what we visited, which can identify our preferences and our, for example, political interest, sexual context, uh, and so on. Uh, the kind of the pages or also the categories that we are browsing so that uh, uh, maybe an attacker gaining access to this data can focus on my own preferences on specific topics, such as, for example, a campaign on change.org or something similar that can target and focus on who am I and how can I be identified as a person browsing the web, uh, for example, URL, path parameters, tokens, uh, IDs, session IDs, and so on, or, for example, data which is manipulated and inserted in the DOM, for example, user personal data, and say something similar. So, privacy, what is, which is the problem, and how we want to address it? Yeah, so from a developer point of view, um, when creating a, a dynamic web page, it's uh, important to, uh, when we are dealing with uh, sensitive data, it's important to not uh, incur, incur in um, 
particular problems uh, uh, such as uh, leakage uh, of data uh, via referral, for example, uh, but also <clears throat> something that uh, in um, OWASP Top 10 API 2000, uh, 2019 was called excessive data exposure. Uh, we will talk about this uh, uh, right uh, after. Um, so, in particular, also when we are dealing with uh, third party uh, scripts, which means uh, in this case uh, uh, external scripts that come from uh, external websites or external sites, um, and also CSS uh, uh, in some case. There could be uh, an increase of um, of the risk in uh, in case there are uh, um, sensitive data that are globally accessible in the sense of uh, um, from the glo accessible from the glo global object and um, or also prototype hijacking, uh, which is actually um, in case of a malicious uh, JavaScript. Uh, overwrites uh, uh, function and hijacks the function, it will be possible to uh, get uh, the arguments even if uh, they are uh, in a limited scope, uh, so even if they are not globally accessible. So, you want to talk about yeah. data sharing? Okay, uh, now. We will dig uh, on the topics that uh, Stefano highlighted just before, uh, and uh, for each of them we will uh, present the problem, which is the impact, uh, and uh, which is the way in uh, how we want to address or at least to identify the problem. In the context of uh, data oversharing, we want to detect uh, how much data and which kind of data is overshared between the server and the client components. Uh, there is uh, an OWASP preference that you can find also by scanning the QR code uh, that you can see in that slide. And uh, which is the kind of impact that we can have in the case of uh, some data is overshared between the server and the client is that uh, if uh, a data breach occurs uh, on the client side, for example, the, the attack surface which is exposed for the, from the user perspective is much wider than if the API is not overshared. We will see in the next slide what does it mean. And how can identify, identify this kind of issue? Uh, we can just uh, hook or uh, uh, identify the the serialization APIs which, is, which are handling the data returned from the server, we can then hook or proxify the objects created after the deserialization, and then we can correlate which data is accessed or not at runtime. And then after that we have some report that we can analyze and we can see what happens. These slides uh, identifies which is the problem and uh, since uh, in uh, most of the applications that we see uh, during our assessment activities, uh, there are the devs, uh, please don't kill me if you're a dev, uh, which are just uh, saying, okay, I have to return user data to fill a form in the user section of an application. May maybe uh, the only fields that need to be compiled are the name, the surname, the email, and uh, something more but uh, not relevant. What can a developer do in, this, in that case? Uh, he can just uh, return a slash user API which is uh, serializing the world DTO object uh, which identifies a user, which can contain much more than what is really needed by the web page which is consuming that API. In that case, uh, you can see that uh, is uh, containing also an address and also a password dash and I can confirm this is a real use case that we found during assessments. Okay, in this uh, scenario we can see uh, which is the problem. Um, there is an API, is returning all the data uh, to the client, but the client, as you can see in, uh, in the image on the left, in the source code on the left, is only using the name field of that JSON but the API is returning the whole object. All the other data is not used at all. So, best practice, what can we do in order to avoid this kind of issue? Basically, just don't overshare. I'm coming back to the previous slide. What uh, would be possible to do in that case is to generate a dedicated API which is returning just the user, the name of the user which is then used by the JavaScript function. 
Just, just to add uh, one thing about uh, uh, about the issue. Uh, since it was uh, in uh, 2019 uh, in the top 10 uh, API um, uh, risks, uh, uh, the problem is uh, consistent. Uh, there is uh, there has been a lot of uh, incidents uh, about uh, the the excessive uh, data exposure. So. It's, it's not something that uh, um, we, we, we might think, ah, it, it, it's not possible, no, it's very rare. No, it's actually a big problem, very big problem, because uh, it, someone tends to not think about, uh, the, 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 someone tends to think about uh, uh, the fact that uh, it's just a, a background request and a background re response, but uh, it's actually, you, you know that it's not. Okay. Another possible issue is globally accessible data, which is the problem. The problem is when a third party script, JavaScript or so on, can access sensitive information which is stored in a global object in the DOM. And uh, there is no always preference for this kind of issue, so it's uh, a pretty new uh, or, or maybe a pretty uncategorized issue in the context of privacy, uh, of, res of privacy testing. And uh, the impact is pretty much obvious, but uh, is uh, a problem when a third-party script can scrape the DOM, for example, and can retrieve sensitive data which is stored inside it. For example, uh, credit card numbers, usernames, emails, uh, sensitive data, as uh, we have seen uh, before, and so on. So, how can we identify this kind of issue? We can basically uh, iterate over all the global object properties and uh, try to infer which kind of data is each variable containing. For example, we can do it, uh, we are doing it, uh, at least uh, at this time, we are doing it by using regular expressions, for example, or uh, we can use something, some kind of other technique to recognize which data is being stored in that variable. In this case, uh, we can see that uh, there is a login page which is uh, pre-filled with a password and, uh, uh, and a username, by searching the DOM, we can find out that uh, there is one specific uh, DOM property and DOM instance which is containing the username, which is uh, compiled into the web application. And this data is accessible by anyone who is accessed uh, to the DOM. So, also in that case, which are the best practices and the bad practices? So, how can we solve this kind of issue after having uh, it uh, recognized? In the first uh, source code, uh, we see that uh, the user data, which is maybe the user, the, the log, the user, lo the logged in user data is stored in a uh, window variable, which is accessible by any JavaScript. The obvious, uh, uh, or maybe the most uh, uh, effective solution would be to store this data in a scoped function so that uh, it is only accessible to scripts uh, which can access this kind of scope. So uh, it should be enclosed in a closure and so it would not be accessible anymore by other, uh, by other scripts. Uh, one thing that maybe we forgot to mention is that uh, all these kind of issues are the most impactful when the web page or the web application is containing third party scripts or is loading third party components inside. If uh, an application is loading only its own components, there is a potential issue, but uh, it, it will have no impact at this time. Then, referral leakage, I leave the word to Stefano. Okay, about uh, the referral leakage is pretty, pretty much uh, straightforward because uh, in every request, uh, uh, the browser uh, uh, sends uh, a header uh, with the name referrer, and uh, <clears throat> it actually leaks uh, the, the the URL uh, the the user are are, are browse, is browsing. So, um, of course, the third if there is a, an ex a request. Um, to a third party, an external site, uh, the referrer will be leaked. That is, uh, uh, let's say, by design, so it's not a leak, 
but uh, the fact uh, that is, it is a leak if, uh, is, uh, can happen if uh, the actual uh, uh, data uh, has some uh, meaning uh, from a privacy or sensi sensitivity point of view. Um, of course, uh, right now, uh, luckily, um, browser now default uh, origin, origin only. Uh, so um, we can, uh, the, the third party will just see uh, the, 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 the website and the site name and the protocol and that's it. But of course it can be, um, um, it can be changed so through the uh, referral policy and uh, this is actually uh, sometimes can be, um, let's say, a problem, a, re a real problem. Um, how to to do that? Uh, we did uh, in the in the tool. Uh, we intercept every outgoing request and check the referrer and uh, uh, compare if it's uh, what is uh, what's leaking and uh, and uh, where it's going. Of course, uh, there are several kind of uh, leakage. Uh, sometimes uh, it's a uh, uh, an actual uh, leak of the of the whole uh, of the whole query string. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, this, uh, this website, uh, JD Digital, uh, is, uh, knows that uh, I, am, I am looking at a particular video. Maybe it's a political video. It's something that might be where I am interested into. And uh, so it's uh, used to profile me. And if JD Digital is an external and unreferenced uh, website uh, uh, to Rep Republica, then uh, it's a, it might be a problem. Uh, of course, uh, sometimes uh, it's actually uh, even the uh, origin is a pro maybe a problem because uh, uh, particular uh, sites, for example, uh, that, that hub. Uh, something that uh, ends in hub, which is not GitHub, um, is actually uh, a problem, no? If uh, the, the information goes uh, uh, outside. Uh, how to uh, improve uh, this, uh, uh, this issue? Of course, first of all, think when we are uh, uh, writing uh, JavaScript uh, or uh, uh, creating uh, uh, a site uh, that deals with uh, particular uh, sensi sensitive data, uh, try to think uh, about it. Try to think about uh, uh, what's going to uh, uh, go uh, uh, externally and uh, uh, use the, the, the referral policy accordingly to that. So there are several policies, uh, uh, so we can, the, the most important uh, is, uh, the most uh, dangerous one is, of course, on safe URL. Uh, we are talking about uh, um, JavaScript, we are talking about external websites, uh, we're talking about external scripts right now. So uh, in this case, uh, um, what happens when uh, we, uh, in a web page, we load the, uh, an external script. The external script has access to the whole uh, DOM, starting from the global object, and uh, uh, not only the DOM in, in the sense of the uh, document object model, but also the uh, defined, declared functions, uh, the objects that are accessible globally, and so on. So these. Uh, could be a problem because th third-party scripts will be able to modify uh, access uh, DOM-level function and objects. It could also, of course, uh, steal the sensitive data and so on. How to do? How to identify? Mm, look for all the modification of the DOM and uh, check for uh, script tags uh, and uh, uh, analyze uh, if it's ex external or not. But uh, so. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, an example uh, would be, let's uh, load uh, our script uh, on top uh, and then load the other scripts, uh, uh, the external scripts in the end. Uh, it would be not very good to, to do the, the opposite. Uh, now, what happens? 
suppose uh, what happens uh, if uh, uh, an external third party is uh, is uh, um, actually accessible uh, is access uh, the actual uh, um, uh, dom it could overwrite also prototypes and uh, overwriting prototypes means that even if we are not uh, uh, exposing uh, uh, globally, global objects. We are uh, with the sensitive data. Uh, we are uh, uh, trying to do our best to limit the scope uh, and so on. An external um, script could actually overwrite, for example, uh, 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 methods of uh, array of the pro prototype of objects, arrays, and so on. So. Uh, if uh, it can overwrite it, then it can actually drop and uh, access to arguments, the arguments of uh, the, um, of uh, uh, even, we can see here the first party uh, script uh, as uh, correctly uh, sco li uh, scoped uh, in a limited, uh, uh, in a self-containing function, uh, the sensitive data, but uh, then it uh, will uh, join, send the, join the array. So what if a third party JavaScript uh, uh, drop the join function, the join pro prototype method, uh, and uh, in, in this case, uh, with, by using the, um, this uh, uh, keyword, it will access to each element uh, of uh, the limited scope uh, object. So it will be actually uh, possible to steal the sensitive data, even if it's not globally accessible. How to, uh, how to fix this? Uh, first of all, let's uh, use uh, the other, uh, uh, the, the, the third party um, um, uh, loading. Uh, by putting all the load, the third party, the external uh, uh, scripts uh, on bottom and uh, load uh, all the first party scripts uh, at first. So this way we will we'll be able to save when it's, it's important to save a reference to the method that is actually, uh, that you are going to, we are going to use uh, uh, to perform uh, uh, operation on the, on the, st uh, the um, on the sensitive data. So this way, even if there is a third party uh, JavaScript, uh, and even if uh, the, the function is over, was overwritten or wrapped, it will, it will not be uh, possible for, uh, for the malicious actor to, to actually uh, steal the data because we already so saved a reference. So Martino, if you wanna talk about the truth. Okay. So, we have talked about the problems. Uh, what have we done uh, in the context uh, of uh, the project we are involved in? We have started a new OWASP project. Uh, and uh, what is, uh, it is uh, basically a browser extension uh, which is implementing all the techniques that we have discussed before. And uh, as I said, it's a browser extension, a Chrome browser extension at this time. And uh, it is designed to be used uh, from both the final users, the auditors, or companies which are uh, interested in uh, examining their, their own application and see how they perform against the sensitive data, against user sensitive data. Uh, the main object, uh, the main goal of this project uh, is to bring awareness uh, to both the final users uh, and also the companies or the auditors and uh, to provide uh, maybe a score, uh, it's a tentative, uh, tentative goal, is uh, to provide a score of the web application uh, in order to say how this application can be impacted by a privacy breach. Uh, the approach basically is uh, to implement different plugins each of them uh, trying to detect and solve the issues that we have talked before. So what we have, plugins. So we have a data version sharing plugin, a referral leakage plugin, a globally accessible data plugin, and so on. This is basically the status uh, of the implementation. Uh, most of all are currently implemented. Uh, most of all are uh, well-performing and promising 
uh, when run against uh, an, an initial data set. Some of them uh, have a major uh, performance impact on the browser, of the, on the browser, on the browsing experience of the user. So, Maybe that can be disabled for final users, but can be very useful for auditors and so on, and, uh, and that's it. We don't uh, have only beautiful things. Uh, what we are currently missing is a, a UI which uh, can be easily uh, used by final users. Since we are technical people, and uh, we have uh, developed uh, a, a user interface which uh, is uh, pretty much uh, uh, easy to understand by technical people, but maybe it uh, is not uh, currently targeting final users. So that's, uh, that's one issue that we are currently having, and uh, it's important to notice it. Okay. So... This will be a brief uh, overview of uh, which kind of output uh, you can expect uh, when uh, running uh, uh, the extension. And uh, for example, this is the user interface that we have implemented uh, for the data version sharing plugin. As you can see, this is obviously an, an excerpt of uh, the, the whole object uh, which is shown uh, by, by the extension, but as you can see, each API which is invoked by the web application that I am browsing on the specific tab of the browser uh, is uh, mapped to an object, to a flat ob object, uh, indicating uh, with uh, each field if that field, uh, which was returned by the server-side component of the web application, have been accessed at the time and at, at uh, when we are looking at uh, the, the report of, of, uh, and the output uh, of the extension. For example, if at some point I click uh, on the UI and I ask for the data version sharing plugin report, we can see that, uh, for example, the first API which was invoked, the result uh, was never accessed, and so it could be pretty much useless to the web application, to the client-side web application. And the same can be, can be said for uh, most, uh, for quite an half of uh, the fields that uh, were returned for the second API, where, uh, where you can see the, 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 cro the red cross, uh, the, the field was not accessed. Then, for globally accessible data, it's pretty straightforward. So we can see for the specific tab where, uh, we, are, uh, uh, where we are querying uh, the plugin, uh, we can see which kind of data is contained and was detected by the extension itself. In this case, it was a web application where uh, I was logged in, and uh, the plugin detected two emails. Uh, it's, it's obviously the same email, but it was, it was stored in different uh, portions of the web application, and also a credit card which was stored inside uh, which is not yours which is not yours i i hope so uh, <laughs> maybe it's the company one but uh, <laughs> don't tell it to matteo um, then moving on uh, referral leakage do you want uh, no okay 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 it's fine okay for example uh, the referral leakage plugin is showing us uh, which kind of leak is exposed to which party? For example, if you look at the image on the left, you can see that, no, let's take the second row since I'm not able to read the, the, the first host name. So we can see in the second line that yahoo.com knows that the user was browsing the search.rechat.it and that the user currently searched for something and there is also a campaign which is identifying maybe uh, some referral technique that was uh, used by an ad advertisement engine or something similar to, to bring the user to that page. What is also important is to look on the image on the right the last, uh, the last instance uh, that we have uh, identified, we can see that uh, in that case, uh, ricetta.it is receiving the leak from tabula.com and uh, it is receiving the full URL with the whole query string at all, which is containing what? Basically identifiers, uh, which uh, can be mm, pretty much uh, uh, meaningless, uh, 
uh, to a, a normal user, to a human. But maybe these kind of identifiers can be used to track the user and to recognize it across different web applications. For example, if uh, the user which was browsing richetta.it and uh, the advertisement uh, hopefully was uh, served by Tabula, if the user browses to another website which is also presenting something from Tabula or can sound to someone which can access to this kind of tokens or identifiers can identify the user even if it was not intended. Then, this is uh, an example of the third party script positioning plugin. Uh, this basically can be, can be read uh, in a way that uh, uh, Libero.it, which is the first part, is the web application uh, which the user was browsing at uh, the time uh, of uh, when uh, the, this kind of output was accessed. Uh, we can see that, for example, uh, a third party was loaded after... Before, before sorry, before... Uh, before the one inline script uh, which is owned by the first party but uh, for example the last three lines uh, see that uh, shows that uh, ubenda.com uh, script was uh, loaded before some first party scripts and so on for the, uh, the last two one uh, instances uh, which were reported by the plugin next steps so basically uh, what we want to do starting from now as I said before, a more user-friendly and more uh, easily interpretable user interface so that can be targeted to final users since uh, it's not uh, very viable at this time. Then, plugin performance optimization, since I, as, I say, as I said before, some plugins are very impactful in terms of uh, uh, consuming resources, for example, the prototype pollution one is very, very, very impactful. Um, and then to identify trusted data sources and CDNs since... Uh, yeah, for example, uh, Google uh, uses uh, GStatic, which is a Google uh, uh, domain, which is controlled by Google. But of course, it's a, so in this case, it's a false positive, no? So uh, we already have uh, uh, the... Um, the logic to perform uh, this kind of uh, rem uh, remove rem by minimizing those false positives. Uh, so we just have to add uh, all this uh, this mapping uh, in order to remove uh, uh, false positive alerts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what we want to do is to implement new plugins, and uh, for example, some kind of ideas can be. Uh, sensitive data exfiltration in the payload of XHR request uh, started uh, by the client, by the, the third party uh, part of the web application uh, hosted by a third party. Uh, then also third party malicious CSS which can uh, exfiltrate data from the, the HTML and can uh, leak data to the, the remote counterpart. And uh, <coughs> Also, uh, understand if, uh, for example, uh, the requests uh, which are going outside are matching the same URL which was uh, intended to be exposed. Yeah, because since the, uh, as we were saying, uh, the, now the referrer uh, just leaks the origin by default, uh, then uh, you, um, the, the third party JavaScript analytics and so on uh, take the whole URL and put it uh, in a header or uh, inside uh, the, 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 the whole uh, um, query string and uh, take it uh, directly. No? So there is no, uh, the referrer now is, is, is less risky, let's say. So we have to, to implement something that tries to identify the, 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 the query string values and see if, where, if it's leaking somewhere else. And also, this is a call to action since it is an OWASP project and it will be publicly available in a few days. If you have ideas you want to join, you have ideas for new plugins, please just tell us or join the project. 
Okay, as I said, the project will be available at this GitHub repository, then uh, you, can, uh, you can take a note and browse it uh, in, the first, uh, in the next few days, and uh, hopefully it will be published uh, in, uh, in this GitHub repo. And uh, anyone who wants to join is very, 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 very welcome. A few conclusions, since uh, we have uh, tried to execute uh, the browser extension against the, the, the top 1K website from uh, some source, I don't remember which was, but uh, it's, it was one of um, Cloud. Trunk or Cloud, CloudFront, okay. And uh, basically we are focusing on uh, uh, less impactful resources, and uh, for example this is... Uh, these are the results from the third, from the referral leakage plugin. And uh, on 1K websites, we have found that, are, that there are there are more than 2,300 uh, leakages, uh, which of are string. of the query string. Or, or of only the query string, which are the most impactful ones. And uh, the, they are leaked to more than 200 third-party domains, so it's uh, pretty interesting and the attack surface uh, is uh, pretty wide. And uh, also, as I said before, uh, just uh, going through this, uh, tracking client-side data on the client-side is very impactful in terms of uh, consuming resources, so, so we have uh, to find some kind of optimization that can be applied uh, to, to, our, to our project and uh, there is a very lot uh, to do in uh, context of privacy since uh, there is a very, very uh, fresh topic which is trending right now. So. Yeah, and if you don't like the word privacy because you are not from Europe, uh, you can, we can talk about uh, PII or uh, uh, sensitive data, it's, it's just the same. <laughs> yeah, or also PHI, personal yeah, health. Uh, right, yeah. health, yes. Okay. That's it. If any question. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, if anybody has, has any questions, feel free to jump in and ask your question here. So no one has a question. I have one. Okay. <laughs> so just break the, the ice. Um, I saw that you did already some uh, some tests using the tool. Um, did you find any? Uh, you said, said that you found a lot of issues. Any critical ones? And if so, did you contacted the the companies uh, where the issues were found? And if they if if so, if they found it critical from their side. Uh, we are mm, dealing with a lot of data to 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 to, to ID. so it, it, it's it's probably there is probably something we have collected uh, all, all the data. We are not yet uh, able to to tell you if there there has been some uh, actually important findings about that. In, in the past, there has been, <laughs> but not right now. Thank you so much. Thank you.